Well, aren't most of the students in the seminary there preparing to become ministers? Absolutely. That's why you're there. But again, Absolutely. if you're there, you're supposed to, what I was taught from infancy was that Christ and God was truth. So the second that doesn't mesh with that, I'm seeking truth, whatever that is. If there is a God, I would say that God is truth. What, so. is, your, what is your method for, for ferreting out the truth? Well, um, it, it's interesting. There was, a, there was a, a theory proposed by one of the people at seminary who, who kind of drew this construct of, it was a triangle, and I'll never forget this because I thought it was so absurd. But he had the, the Word of God, the Bible is the one thing, then your community, and then your own personal revelation. But that's anybody. And anybody can find those things that they want to fit. They can find the people that they agree with and all that. So then what becomes truth? To me, uh, uh, while I was studying history, I've always loved geography and geology. And the more I studied that and the idea of the, the earth and geologic time and all that began to just completely knock so much of that out. But even from personal levels to what I have saw, and I guess the biggest thing back to what we're going to discuss with military history, I've, I've always found it tragic, some of these books like The Purpose Driven Life and all these things by, by this guy Rick Warren and yes, all this, know and God knows is. all the numbers of hairs on your head and all that, and I've read so much on warfare, and I think it's so much of that's just a, a travesty to what people went through, because for those people that want to believe that way, to think that God had a little plan for this yeah. guy to have his intestines I blown think, out and I on and God on. God knows how many hairs I've lost from my hair. <laughs> Uh, but now back to Stephen Ambrose, uh, who was a, a major factor in what was the D-Day Museum in right. New Orleans, right. and it's now the World War II Museum. Right. Were you involved in that project in any I was way? involved on, on, at the, on some of the beginning stages, just sitting in on the meetings and things, and was involved in his, Steve, uh, Steve's operations were basically run by his uh, son, and his son was the one that inv invited me to go up, but I kind of got caught up in a... A, a, a rather difficult scenario of having a, a real boss who wasn't my boss in, in, in name and then his son. And, and the better I did with father, the more I kind of ran into conflict with son. And so it ended up being something that I just stepped away from for good. And after working on Band of Brothers, I got pulled into a gigantic producer brawl that was just not pretty. There was so much behind the scenes on Band of Brothers that people would be stunned to know about. I mean, it tore up a lot of the uh, camaraderie between families because HBO paid some people some money, some people got nothing. It was it was a lot more than the the rah rah go yeah, America. But I, I am very proud of Hanks for what he's been doing with such as the uh, the new theater they've opened and all that because it's a great story and it's something yeah. people should know and about. What, and what is developing down at the World War II Museum is is really superior. And they've got a long way to go, but uh, apparently they were able to get some substantial financing, and we're going to have quite a museum there when, Absolutely. when, they, when Absolutely. they're completed. Well, all right, David, we, I've been holding you back from the topic that is presently of, in, of special interest to you, uh, and, and that has to do with somehow or other the connection between religion and militarism, and tell us, tell us about that. Um, I was, was such an ironic story. I was on my way to my first church job while in seminary, and I was in a car accident. And if I would believe God saved me from God, if you wanted to, you know, these things that everything happens for a reason, all these lovely little little sayings people have. But I was in this car accident, and I uh, I had purchased a set of uh, from Shelby Foot, famous uh, writer on the Civil War. Uh, he was a novelist and not liked by some historians because he wrote so well that it kind of angered them. But he wrote this incredible story on this on the Civil War and I bought this for my father so I was waiting to get transported back uh, there's a problem with insurance and everything on the vehicle so I was coming back to Louisiana leaving seminary just knowing I don't believe this anymore and that was a that was a big step but I came back and in all my searching for truth the two books I was reading was this book the third chimpanzee by Jared Diamond and then I was reading this Civil War set on by Shelby Foote and the more I read into this uh, it was right, quite fascinating to read, and, and, and Foote's an, an incredible writer. I mean, he paints the story, and you were right there. And he has, you know, he talks of Lincoln's praying in the bedroom and, and agonizing over the peril of the of the nation, you know, in the in the, in the throes of the Civil War. And then, juxtaposed with that, you had uh, General Stonewall Jackson, one of the most famous Southern generals that every good Southern boy knows all about, Stonewall Jackson. And you had Leonidas Polk. Well, Jackson was an Episcopal. Well. Jackson was a Presbyterian deacon, and Leonidas Polk was an Episcopal bishop. And so when Leonidas Polk wasn't uh, leading men in battle on a Sunday, he was doing services. But it was very ironic. Here you have this Christian God that 
Abraham Lincoln is praying to, and here you have this Christian God that Jackson and Polk are praying to. And each and side was sides, asking God to help them to win. And tearing each and other God to pieces. And God had to pick sides. And tearing each other to pieces. So, and I've not, you know, from the simplest fundamental level of two people that are friends who share this faith, I've seen it on, on so many levels. And, and the way that that all meshes, a, one, a study of World War I, you see the nations, they have some newsreels from some of the latest documentaries that have come out. And you have the Russian Orthodox ministers, ministers blessing the troops. The Germans on their belt buckles had Gott mit uns, God with us. Yes. The French, the English. I mean, the one ex, one small example of real Christianity that was exhibited was in the uh, the first Christmas of World War One, and they did a great movie on it called Joyeux Noël, and it was a ceasefire. And the the Scots and the French and the Germans ended up coming together yes. in yeah. the middle, and the. Christian leadership and rulers blew that thing to pieces. They were furious with it. They separated the units out. Men were were, were uh, stripped of rank and sent to well, other places. And well, all. back when you mentioned the SS troops with with the uh, God. Oh, they weren't even SS. That was well, to German regulars. All right, uh, but, but uh, they they like to accuse <coughs> atheist um, uh, Hitler as being an atheist, which he was not. Uh, and, and that's part of the proof that his people had God on their belt buckles. Well, that was World War One, but in World War II, well, whatever his, he took issue with the Catholic Church, but then if yeah. you read Mein Kampf, he does. But in he, World War II, they also, the they still had, they, they were still wearing those belt buckles, and so uh, they, wanna, uh, they want to discredit atheism by saying Hitler was an atheist, which, of course, he wasn't. No. All right, well, I interrupted you. Um, but you, 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 you're concerned about religion's influence on warfare, which probably goes all the way back to the, to, I mean, where would you start? Well, that's a, it's a subject I think most people don't really want to get anywhere near it because it is so gigantic and one can say what's causing, you know, does one explain one, does one answer the other, what causes which one, it's, it's, a, it's definitely a fascinating subject. It's certainly been used through time to justify war, I'll, I'll say that much. I've always found it kind of, I, I don't mean to insult people's intelligence, but I've always found it rather comical when people even want to hear that chant, no blood for oil because we've been fighting over resources since the dawn of civilization. Give me two three-year-olds and a toy between them and I'll show you two people fighting over resources. We just, we do this. But how we dress it up and how we justify what our actions are to do that and that's where, and for right, me, well, being, a, being in the Marine Corps, and I, I used to read so much on Vietnam, but it was very much a political and a religious thing of we are doing the right thing, back to having a very fundamentalist upbringing, and to right. see that that was not the case at all. Right, well, let different. me see if I can understand what you are saying about uh, blood for oil, which is, uh, which is not acknowledged by, the, by our government, which is, you know, is, is having a war. Uh, how does that tie in with religion? Well, because if we say that we're going to war over oil, that's not really as motivating, and I think that's part of the nature of humanity. We have to have some greater cause. So if we can paint it as this terrorist nation or whatever, not to say that there aren't acts that are done there, but why are we interested there? Why did we do anything in Rwanda? Why was Iraq? I mean, clearly it was resources. I'm still trying to understand that connection with religion. How it's covered and justified All right. and painted. Well, yeah, let's talk about the Iraq War, which sure. people call you know blood for, for oil. Uh, and they, they presumably one of our purposes is to bring democracy to a country which still has nothing to do with religion. And we, I don't think we're going over there to fight Islam. Islam. So I don't quite see the connection there between religion and, and the war. 